Good morning, everyone. Hi. Looks like we all kind of made it through the time change here. People kind of slowly still trickling in, but we've, uh, we've just about got a group. I am running the show solo this morning. Pastor Steve is away, and uh, Barbara and I made a last-minute change, so that's not so much a mistake in your bulletin as a uh, request from me that I preach this week, and she'll be with you next week for preaching. So just so you know that. There are a few announcements um, in the bulletin. One, the prayer, I think it's still printed in the bulletin, it may not be, but the prayer bags for Lent, if you would like to participate in an at-home Lenten devotion, are still available in the back. It is never too late to jump in and start having that daily devotion. I have not heard if all of the uh, 15-minute time slots got filled, but nevertheless, please feel free to um, grab a brown paper bag from the pew out in the narthex if you would like to participate. There is also, I see a a collection for Lutheran World Relief going on. Is there someone who would like to speak to that? Good, Good piece of work to do and a good time to do it in Lent to kind of turn our minds to the needs of others. Also in your bulletin, a newsletter went out via email. If you did not receive that and you would like to receive it, let the office know so that they can get you on the list. And then new member orientation, if you or anyone you know might be interested in new member orientation, let, you can let me know today or let Pastor Steve know sometime between now and the end of March. He'd like to kind of get a list together. I'd say likewise, we've been having some murmurs about confirmation, so if there's someone in your life you know who needs to go through a confirmation, um, as Lutherans, we do that as teenagers. If you're an adult and you haven't been confirmed, that tends to be sort of taken care of in a new member type class. So let us know if, if any of this applies to you or anyone that you know, and we will be happy to work on accommodating that need. Other announcements this morning? All right, then let's just take one mo. Oh, wait, I have another announcement. You have a beautiful colored sheet in your bulletin. It may be green, it may be blue, it may be a different color, but I know I saw green and blue. This is for you to take a look at the stewardship opportunities, stewardship of your time and talents. Take a look, see if anything on this list is something you might be able to help with. Go ahead and put your name and phone number on there. Mark what's interesting. I do not know where we are leaving these. Are we leaving these by the offering plate? Perfect, offering plate or office. So please take a moment to look through that and fill it out before you leave today. Let's take just a few moments here for some reflection before we begin with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all sins whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Please rise. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your 
God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We'll continue with our gathering song. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated, and we will continue with the reading of the word. We're going to start with Psalm 27. We will read it responsively. You can respond with the bold. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust shall not be shaken. One thing I ask of the Lord, one thing I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to see God in the temple. 
For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter, hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary, and raise me up high upon a rock. Our second lesson is from Philippians chapter 3. Brothers and sisters, join me, join in imitating me, and observe all those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction, their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that also enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. The word of the Lord. Let's rise for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to Luke, the thirteenth chapter. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. So in that gospel lesson that we just heard, Jesus has been sitting and teaching, going through many parables and explanations of the kingdom of God with those who are gathered to listen. And then some people come to him and they say, he needs to run, to hide. Herod's looking for him and intends to kill him. Jesus doesn't exactly say he won't go, but he kind of says, not right now. I have more work to do first. He says he needs to keep teaching and to keep healing. And then he says, I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. That sounds very familiar, right? That's a verse we know well. We use that in our liturgy for sure, 
but it comes from the Old Testament and is quoted in a specific part of Jesus' life and ministry, near the end, in fact, on a day that's coming up pretty soon in our church here, about four weeks from now, Palm Sunday. Here's that text, the text where they do say that about Jesus as he comes into Jerusalem. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the path that kings used to come into town, by the way. The whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. But Jesus answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones would shout. There it is. Very familiar, right? And being Palm Sunday is such a familiar day to us, I think we kind of are familiar too with this type of entry to Jerusalem, knowing that it was generally what was reserved for kings and high dignitaries, really important people, had the road lined as they came in and cloaks and leaves thrown down before them and chants said in their honor. And here's Jesus telling Herod, That's what's going to happen the next time he sees Jesus. Not really a docile response at all. Also, it's a little bit of a juxtaposition, a little bit of a comparison here. Jesus being called on to appear before this ruler who only wants to take Jesus' life away in order to preserve his own power. And then Jesus, alluding to himself as a king, but seeking only to continue to teach a better way and to put an end to suffering. Power and death on Herod's side, knowledge and life with Jesus. It certainly makes you think about what true power looks like, what a true king is. Jesus isn't focused on gaining keeping, or protecting his power. He knows that true power comes from God, and true power is used for doing good. Herod is sure, on the other hand, that if he gets rid of all of the threats to his political and religious rule, that he'll be doing his kingly duty under Caesar, basically acting out of fear to protect his title. But going forward to the day of the cross and looking back over Jesus' ministry, Jesus shows us time and again what it is to be a true king in action, not just a king in title. And he does it by remaining focused on the main thing, the important things throughout his ministry. Earlier in his ministry, for a Judean man whose daughter died young, prematurely, and was visited by such power and grace in Jesus' presence that she walked again. Jesus was surely a king and a Messiah, a king sent by God to free humanity, even from death. For a group of outcasts, tax collectors, sinners, people who had jobs that made others not want to come anywhere near them, made them unclean in society, who were excluded from the temple and public life, but with whom Jesus went and had dinner and sat and ate and drank, shared wine and bread. Jesus was surely a king and a different kind of Messiah than they expected. A king sent by God to unite people and to share love. For a woman at a well, who had floated from one husband to another just in order to find the most basic support and protection for herself, whom Jesus turned to and treated with compassion and with dignity, Jesus was surely a different kind of king and Messiah, a king sent by God 
to the oppressed, to the orphan, to the widow, to those in danger, to bring living water and everlasting life. And soon in our church year, for the criminal hanging on a cross on Black Friday, who has promised a welcome in the kingdom of God, even as he was suffering punishment at the hands of man, Jesus was surely a king and a Messiah. This picture of a king, one who stoops down, one who looks around, one who knows the names of the nameless and the faces of the forgotten, isn't the king that we think of when we envision power and strength. Even today, I don't think he's the king we think of when we envision power and strength. He's certainly not the king that was thought of in his own day when people envisioned absolute control, absolute power. He's not the king that Herod is, grasping for power by causing more and more destruction and suffering and death. Instead, the king that we confess is prince of peace, bearer of grace, king of God's glory. In our lesson today, he says so pretty clearly simply by saying he has more important things to do than bow down to the power hungry. Jesus has the very clear ability to focus on, follow, and call out what is important. And he shows it in this text as an example for us by not getting caught up in fear or despair, or frustration. He could have been afraid. He may have been afraid. I would have been afraid if Herod was trying to kill me. He may have been frustrated because people came and told him to hide despite everything he had just taught. It still felt like they were missing the point. But he doesn't run and hide in fear. He doesn't throw his hands up and leave in frustration. Instead, he leaves by staying focused on the main thing by leaving those things he can't control to God in the moment and continuing to walk the path to Jerusalem. That path to Jerusalem, that walk is really kind of our call during Lent too. We often talk about Lent as a journey. We have a call to give things to God on this journey that we can't carry ourselves things that have a tendency to get in our way. Some people give up things for Lent. Some of you have probably given up things for Lent. I'm sure some of you know other people who give up things for Lent. Some people give up really good things for Lent, good things to give up, like cigarettes or unhealthy food, and, and sometimes it sticks and it really makes this whole life change for them. Sometimes people give up things that are maybe a little more arbitrary, like chocolate or bread or whatever else. But the idea of giving something up can go a lot deeper than that if we think about it as giving up something we shouldn't be holding on to anyway. Grudges, fears, anger, old hurt, personal wounds, wherever we pick them up in life. Even wrongs that we've committed against others that we carry around, burdening us, weighing us down with guilt and regret. I've known people who lose several pounds during Lent each year because they're so devoted to giving up indulgences, like desserts. That's probably good for anyone's health, right? I think we could all stand to give up some sugar and lose a few pounds. But we carry around other types of weight, too. What if we got rid of that? What if we gave that up? Imagine living without some of the burdens you carry. Imagine letting go of one stressor in your life that maybe isn't that relevant to the main thing. Imagine saying with Jesus, I know there's a threat out there, but I'm busy doing the important stuff right now. So I have to let some of that other stuff go. 
It isn't easy, but it really is what we're called to do during Lent, and not just during Lent. We just remember during Lent. We get to practice a little bit during Lent because it truly is hard, and it truly is the call for our whole Christian lives to live in a more healthy way, to find wholeness in our whole lives. Lent helps us reset a little bit to do that work because we forget what the main thing is over and over and over. We forget what the main thing is, and we need to be reminded. But the gospel today gives us a promise that we can let go of some of the burdens that we carry. We can turn our thoughts to doing good for ourselves and for others because in the end, this beautiful promise that we will be gathered gently as if by a mother hen gathering her brood, gathered into the love of the family of God no matter what. Jesus makes it to Jerusalem, Jesus makes it to the cross, he makes it to the tomb, and he makes it out of the tomb, no matter what. So maybe this Lent, give up something that you don't need anyway, something holding you back. And I know we're a couple of weeks in, but it's not too late to do it now. Give up something that's holding you back and replace it with trust that the king of kings the prince of peace the love of a nurturing god is going to be way better able to fill that space than what you've been carrying around thanks be to god amen Amen. you may rise. Let us confess now our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 5 in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of to live. 
drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You gather the church into a community of mercy and grace, unify Christians around the globe in efforts to proclaim good news even in the face of opposition, and to protect those whose lives are imperiled by the gospel. Merciful God, you create the entire universe and call it good. Hinder those who would cause further destruction to our planet's fragile ecosystems and augment the calls of those who advocate for thoughtful stewardship of the Earth's resources. Merciful God, you raise up leaders committed to love and justice. Nurture in those who govern patience to receive criticism, openness to new ideas, and courage to change course when needed for the sake of the common good. Merciful God, You hear us when we cry to you. Attend to those expecting a child and console those who have experienced miscarriage. Comfort veterans enduring post-traumatic stress. Shield those endangered by domestic violence. Uphold those who are ill or grieving Especially today, we pray for Susan, Dawn, Travis, Milt, Steve, David, Gerda, Barb, Roy, Brett, Jack and Darlene, Kathy, Dawn, Steve, Debbie, Mary, David, Carrie, Alyssa, Chris, Charles, Nikki, Kara, Trey, Tom, Hunter, Mike, Janet, and all of those experiencing loss and devasta devastation in Ukraine and in Eastern Europe, and all those who go to their aid. We Merciful God, you kindle faith that moves us into action. Guide children and adults preparing for baptism or confirmation. Empower Sunday school teachers, confirmation leaders, and parents who share their faith with younger generations. Lead, guide, and support the call committee here at First Lutheran. Give us all a renewed sense of vocation. Merciful God, for what else do the people of God pray? You welcome us into your heavenly realm. We give thanks for those whose labors on earth are ended and who now rest with you. On the final day, gather all of us with them in your loving arms, merciful God. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's find a way to share a sign of peace with one another.
as you are seated, we will continue with our offertory song. Just a reminder, we are not passing the plates, but they are in the back so that if you would like to make a donation as you leave, you're welcome to do that. our provider. You have not fed us with bread alone, but with the words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with the choirs of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. And all are welcome at communion. We will do a continuous line for communion beginning on this side of the sanctuary. You will take a wafer and you're welcome to eat it and then take a small cup of wine and you're welcome to drink that. And then there is a silver bowl on the end of the first pew on either side that you can deposit that empty cup in. Come and eat.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. This is the mission that we share in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our sending song, God be with you till we meet again. Thank you.